Hello, my name is Cesar Valadez. I work at the Serpico Stat team. Serpico Stat team is a young team between Institute Curie and India. Together with Ludovic Leconte and John Salamero, one of the two group leaders, we are responsible for the lattice light sheet microscope at Institute Curie. Today, I will present some informatics tools for the reconstruction, visualization, and analysis of light sheet data. First, I would like to mention why we need special tools for light sheet data. Probably all of you already face many problems, including visualization, reconstruction, and analysis of light sheet data. I would like to show one simple experiment of light sheet microscope. Here, I show the endocytosis of galactin 3, a lectin that enters into the cell but mainly classic independent endocytosis. The workflow includes segmentation of the Golgi apparatus, spot detection, estimation of the distance to the Golgi, and also to the cell membrane. Then, there is a 3D tracking and a speed calculation. In fact, we could make even more complex analysis regarding the type of movement of these galactin 3 tracks. Nevertheless, it's important to mention that the acquisition was 30 minutes long. It implies around 30 gigabytes of raw data for a given cell. Each volume was acquired every 5 seconds. In fact, the raw data was corrected at the convolve for visualization purpose. These steps include passing from 16 bits to 32 bits and to increase the number of pixels due to the discrete step. In fact, this will generate some extra gigabytes. This can be even more complex with other microscopes, as in the case of the spin, where the acquisition can reach the terabyte. So, we can summarize two different challenges. The first one, the reconstruction. As we saw in the other courses, light sheet data implies different geometries. So the first question that we face is how we can manipulate or correct 100 gigabytes or more. The next question will be how can I visualize this type of data? Which format do I need? In fact, the microscope manufacturer can use a specific format. And finally, how can I analyze this amount of data? The purpose of this course is to show some tools that target these problems. There are a center number of tools as GPU computing to parallelize rendering or processing tasks in multiple small processors of the graphic card. Another tool is parallel computing. It allows us to do different tasks simultaneously in a multi-CPU computer. Also, the use of hierarchical format to access the data in a more effective way, especially during visualization. So the computer is able to render with the appropriate resolution and without keeping full data in the RAM memory. Examples are HD5 or M5 formats. I won't mention today, but there is also the possibility to use clusters dedicated to image analysis. In addition, I would like to mention another problem, that is how to organize this data. In this case, the data management. The outline of this talk is divided mainly in four parts. In the first part of this talk, I will talk about field reconstruction tools. Later on, I will mention some visualization software. Then, I will discuss some analysis programs, including tracking, segmentation, and deep learning. It is important to mention that some software can do visualization and analysis. Finally, I will talk a few words about the work that we do in the Serpicosta team regarding pre-processing and analysis of lattice light sheet data. Let's start with the first challenge of the light sheet microscopy, the reconstruction of the data. This is mainly due to the different types of the setup configuration, including multiple views or a specific geometry. In the following slides, I will present two selected software. The first reconstruction software that I would like to introduce is the LLS Spy. This is mainly for lattice light sheet microscopy data. As Ludovic Lecon, John Salamero, and Matthew Ducro explained in the LLSM practical video, the lattice light sheet microscope has a special geometry. I really like this example from the GitHub of Volker. Here's a thing to illustrate the LSM acquisition using cards. 
In this case, we can observe that acquisition in the lat slicing microscope is performed moving the stage. In consequence, a sharing transfer is necessary. LLSPI is a software developed by Tyler Lambert from Harvard Medical School. It is a very nice graphical user interface and it is using the CUDA DECOM program from Lin Shao and the SPI Imagine Viewer from Martin Weber. This software allows to do some pre processing tasks as median filters or auto detect background and processing tasks as this queue and the convolution. Another software is multi-view reconstruction, and it was developed by Stefan Previs. This software is mainly for multi-view microscopy datasets. This program can be added to Fiji and it uses Big Data Viewer. Later on, I will give more details about Big Data Viewer. This software reads is the FI data. I think it is also able to read in FI format. Multi-view reconstruction includes different tasks. First, it detects interest points. Then, it performs a registration using these interest points, and finally, it does fusion and deconvolution. It is important to mention that this program demands a lot of RAM. On the other hand, it uses GPU hardware accelerating processing. One of the challenges of the light sheet microscopy is the visualization, considering the size of the data. In the following slides, I will present some commercial and open source solutions. It is important to mention that some of the programs allow some analysis workflow. I would like to mention three commercial software that I have the opportunity to evaluate. You could also find others in the market with similar quality. Some commercial software have free freeware versions. The first one is Amaris. Amaris uses is the file format. This includes some tools as filament tracer, Amaris cell that allows cemented analysis cells under compartments, Amaris XT. This allows you to do a customized uh, analysis in MATLAB, Python, and Java. There is also the option of batch analysis. Another tool is ClearView for the convolution, and the other one is Amaris Stitcher. Amaris is quite user-friendly, but it requires a lot of RAM and this space. There is a new version with machine learning classifiers. The second one is Arivis. The main advantage of Arivis is the high performance in standard PCs and laptops for visualization. It allows to create custom workflow using MATLAB and Python. It has also GPU acceleration. The third one is Avia. This software is mainly for deep learning and machine learning applications. They have one specialty format. They also have some tools for neural tracing and tree tracking. It uses some neural network architecture as UNET. They have GPU acceleration, and it allows classifying objects using a random forest algorithm. One of the basic open source viewer is the 3D viewer in ImageJ. This software allows visualizing a small series of data. 3D viewer is limited by the memory of ImageJ. It allows to adjust the transfer function. It is also possible to do some transformations. The next open source software is ClearVolume. It is implemented in Fiji and it uses OpenCL. It works with most of the graphic cards. It is easy to use, but it's limited by the memory of the computer. This means that all the data has to be opened in ImageJ before to visualize. Another program is Big Data Viewer. This was developed in the Max Planck Institute. It is implemented in Fiji. It handles big data. It is easy to use, and it allows annotations. It uses the HD5 format as a Maris and Arivis. The only inconvenience is that it only shows one slide. The next software is Pi3D Data. It was developed by Han Xuan Pen at Janela Research Campus. It allows to read 5D image with gigaboxels and even teraboxels within seconds or subseconds. There are many available plugins for image acquisition, 
data management and analysis. It includes a terafly and tera converter. This software uses a similar format as M5. This means that different resolution of data are organized in folders. In fact, the rendering is adapted to the screen and the visualized areas. Another software is Spimagine. It was coded by Martin Weber. It uses GPU acceleration by OpenCL. It only allows a single channel visualization. It handles big amount of data. In fact, I tested with 300 gigas. It is better to use multiple 3D files than one single file. Uh, it is written in Python, so the installation can be complicated. For Mac, there is a DMG file, but for Windows, the installation can be complex. One of my favorite tools is Napare. It is a work in progress. I should say this because probably there will be even more options when you are seeing this video. It is written in Python. It was started by Juan Nunez Iglesias from Monash University. It allows browsing, annotating, and analyzing large multidimensional images. It is built on top of Qt for GUI, DSP for GPU rendering, but it uses some scientific Python libraries as NumPy. It allows multicolor. You need to know a few commands to use Qt, but recently there is the option to create some graphical interfaces using the library magic GUI. There is also wrappers for HD5 and SAR files format. It is validated in Mac, Linux, and Windows. I use it in Windows 10, but there is also a standalone version. MoFonet is an interactive open source web based tool for visualizing 3D and 4D segmented datasets. It was developed by Emmanuel Ford from CRBM Montpellier. It provides some interaction tools to explore the structure, dynamics, and variability of biological shapes, like developing embryos. Some datasets are also linked to single cell expression data. MoFonet uses Unity 3D Gaming Engine which runs on a standard internet browser and explodes the recent power of the WebGM. There are other two interesting applications in Fiji. The first one is a side view. It is for virtual reality rendering. The second one is 3D script. It's a plugin for creating 3D and 4D animation on microscopic data. In contrast to other 3D visualization programs, animations are non keyframe based but are described by a natural language based syntax. The next section is the analysis tool. For this section, I select a few interesting analysis tools that can be applied for that analysis in large microscopy. One common software for image analysis is MATLAB. This software includes some interesting toolboxes as image processing or parallel computing. And it is possible to do GPU computing. It is limited in terms of visualization, but it is very useful for prototyping. Here, I show a recent preprint from Philippe Rudeau from the Nusser team at the University of Texas Southwestern. Now, he is a group leader at the Century Center at Marseille. It shows a very interesting tool for 3D tracking in MATLAB, applied to lattice light sheet microscopy. In fact, we can observe that there are some limitations in terms of visualization. Nevertheless, the projection can be very useful. Finally, I show some speed estimation of galactic tree tracks. As you can see, it is presented as plot, a simple way of visualizing 3D treated data. One of the fashion language for image analysis is Python. There are some interesting libraries as NumPy, numerical Python, that has multidimensional arrays, basic linear algebra, Fourier transforms, random number generation. 
There is another called SPI, Scientific Python, that includes higher level science and engineering modules as optimization. Another interesting library is Matplotlib. There is a plotting library that allows you to create histograms, line plots, head plots. And then there is Pandas for structured data manipulation and operation. In fact, this is quite focused for data scientists. There is also the Jupyter Notebook. It is an open source web application that allows you to create and share documents that contain live code, equations, visualization, and narrative text. Specifically for live sheet my application, one interesting library is called DASC. It is mainly for parallel computing. Finally, there are very interesting libraries for machine learning as SQL Learn and TensorFlow. In the following slide, I will introduce two analysis tools developed mainly in Fiji or image. The first one is called Click2. It is a library of GPU accelerated image processing commands. It was developed by Robert Asse from Max Planck Institute in Dresden. You can use common programs of Fiji with a GPU implementation. This is quite important for big data. This library can be used also in Java, MATLAB, and IC. It uses OpenCL and you can use with most of the graphic cards. The next one is called Mastodon, a large-scale tracking and track editing framework for large multi-view images. It was developed by Janir Tinives from Pasteur Institute and Tobias Priech from Max Planck Institute. It's a low interactive browsing and also you can build tracking and lineage data from image. It is user-friendly and it has semi-automatic and fully automatic tracking. I would like to talk about two useful machine learning software that can be applied to live data. The first one is called Care, Constant Aware Restoration. It is based on deep learning via Keras and TensorFlow. It is written in Python, but there are some plugins to use the train networks in Fiji. It was developed in Juice Lab. In fact, it is quite an interesting tool. Nevertheless, it is important to mention that as other deep learning techniques, you need a lot of data for training. This tool allows you to do the noising and the convolution. Here I show the comparison between the raw data, Lucy Richardson deconvolution, and Kerr deconvolution. Another option is trainable Weka segmentation. It is a Figi plugin that combines a collection of machine learning algorithms with a set of selected image features to produce pixel-based segmentations. It was developed by Ignacio Arganda Carreras. You can observe one example of cell segmentation using this software. There are also some interesting software for segmentation. Elastic is a simple user-friendly tool for interactive image classification, segmentation, and analysis. This tool can be applied to live sheet data, as shown in this paper for nucle nuclear segmentation in an embryo. The second one is Stardist. It is a cell nuclei detection method for microscopy image with star convex shape priors. It is written in Python and uses the deep learning library Keras. It has GPU computing based on OpenCL. It is working quite well for 3D segmentation. Finally, I would like to mention a very interesting toolbox called ZeroCost DL for me. This tool allows you to do training and implementation of common deep learning approaches to microscopy images. It exploits the easy use of access to GPU provided by Google Colab. I would like to introduce two computing platforms. They are not only for live images, but they can be applied to different microscopy data. The first one is called EMJOY. It is a web-based computing platform for deploying advanced image analysis tools such as deep learning. It was developed by Wei Ouyang from Pasteur Institute. EMJOY runs on a mobile and desktop environment. 
across different operating system plugins can run in the browser, localhost, remote, and cloud server. The second one is Bioimage IT. This tool was developed in the frame of the image processing and data management node of France by Mayan. It was coded initially by Sylvain Prejean from the CERP requested team, and we worked together in the implementation of this tool for different microscopy techniques, including live sheet data. Bioimage IT is an open source integrator for image data management and analysis. The aim of Bioimage IT FBI project is to create an integra integrative application that allows any scientist to annotate, process, and analyze data using only a single high-level application. Bioimage IT is based on three different components. First, an image annotation method based on a JSON file system. Second, an image processing and analysis tool integration method based on Docker and XML command description. And third, a graphical interface to easily annotate data, ROM processing tools, and visualize data and results. Finally, I would like to present some examples of the analysis performed in the Serpico Step Team. As I mentioned, I am part of the Serpico Step Team. I'm responsible of the LLSM projects with Ludovic Leconte. At Curie Institute, the LLSM is used by different teams to investigate biological mechanisms at the single cell level. This includes the analysis of exocytosis events as transferring receptor recycling and the analysis of endocytic pathway as shown in the endocytosis of galactin 3 labeled with quantum dots. Another application is the coincidence of molecular actors involved in different mechanisms as RAP proteins. Another example is the coordination of multiple mechanisms as recycled endosomes and cytoskeleton remodeling. Finally, I show, I show also an acquisition of mitochondrial dynamics using the LLSM. In addition, we also use the structural innovation microscopy modality previously published by Bexic with the first version of the lattice slicing microscope. In the right side, you can see the comparison of the raw maximum exit projection of RAP6 and the MIP after SIM and the convolution. In the left side, I present a SIM acquisition of the of life act. This type of data requires strong data analysis and visualization tools. One of the advantages of the LLSM is to visualize 3D tracks at the whole cell level with the best compromise in terms of time and space resolution. In the right side, you can see the spatial distribution of the average speed and maximum speed of galaxy 3 endocytosis after segmentation and tracking using MATLAB. Galactin-3 is a lectin that binds to glycosylectric cargos in the plasma membrane before entering the cell by mainly clatin-dependent endocytosis. In this analysis, we track endocytic vesicles in SUM-159 breast cancer cells that express the gfp tax clatin adapter AP2. AP2 was used as a membrane marker, since this adapter is found mainly close to the membrane in addition, it allows to quantify the percentage of endocytic cargos entering by class independent endocytosis. In addition, we also study different motions of galactin 3 endocytosis. In this work, together with Bissembrian, we propose a new method to identify different motion types in the same track. Another example, it was a study published last year in collaboration with Henry Renard from UC Lobin in Brussels. We studied the endocytosis of CD166, a tumoral marker. This analysis was done mainly in MATLAB and the visualization was performed in Amaris. One of the largest benefits in general is linked to the low photo bleaching and poor phototoxicity. In addition, the high rate of image acquisition combined with relatively high resolution 
allow us to improve the accuracy of tracking approaches in the whole cell volume. This is the LLSM Data Workflow Accurate Institute. My colleagues, Ludovic Lecom and John Salamero, will give more details about it in the LLSM practical course. Data is acquired using the Slyboot software of 3i. This software allows us to do the skew and the convolution. We prefer to use the LLSPI considering the CUNA implementation in the skew and the convolution. After the data is acquired and transferred to the NAS, we analyze using a powerful workstation connected directly to the NAS. This workstation has 64 CPUs, allowing parallel computing. It has also a professional graphic card for CUDA programming. We have another workstation close to the microscope, mainly used for visualization, notably in 3D as a preview. We use the Biomash IT application previously developed in the frame of France Biomine for reconstruction, the convolution, and the noising. Additionally, we have another workstation for VR tools, as Diva, developed by Curie Institute and Pasteur Institute. Finally, I would like to thank the Curie Institute teams for providing samples and images for the analysis presented in this course especially to Ludovic Lecon and John Salamero, members of the Serpico State team in charge of the sample preparation and image acquisition. Also, thanks to the Johannes team from Curie Institute for the data regarding galactinsic endocytosis. I recommend you to visit another webinar focused on big data from Novias. I also would like to invite you to see the solution that we propose in front of my for data management called Biomash IT. Please don't forget to participate in the question and answer session. Thanks again for your attention.